What's up, this is GQ Recommends. And today we're talking about five style moves you should try in the new year. So it's 2023, a new year, maybe you have some resolutions, maybe some of them are style focused, maybe they're not, but we've got five style trends that we really think you should try this year. Yeah, if your wardrobe's feeling a little bit tired or you find yourself in like a bit of a stylistic rut, I think what we tend to do is just like home in on a few pieces that we feel like will rejuvenate what we're wearing and just work throughout the rest of the year. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, some of these pieces we're gonna talk about today are something you already have in your closet, but maybe haven't thought about in a while. It's more that in 2023, it feels like they have a renewed relevance. How we want to wear them now feels different, at least to us, than how you might have worn them in the past. So if you're looking for inspiration, look no further. Striped button-ups. Haven't these been around for like ever? I mean, it's not a new thing, but I think that the striped button-up has kind of been coming back in maybe sort of like a 90s way. They're like, I don't want to say oversized, but they've, they've definitely got a flow to them. It's kind of refreshing to have something that is not so over the top, not so trendy, not so like eye-catching. I mean, it's a classic piece. Just because it has buttons doesn't mean you have to button it. I think maybe that's also part of the charm is like you can wear a button up in a few different ways. You can wear it with a tie, you can wear it with an open collar or just straight up open like I am and you know, show off your cool graphic tee or something like that. Which shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks. One we particularly like right now is from this brand Sunflower. It's got that classic vertical stripes, but if you look a little bit closer, the stripes kind of vary in color, which gives it a little bit more depth than just, you know, a solid white background and, and like one color. It's also not like a pure white, is it? Like to my eyes, it looks almost ecru or like off-white. Yeah, it's not so like bleach white, which is maybe easier to wear with a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of color palettes. And it feels like it's telegraphing that like, I'm wearing this because I want to, not because I have to. I like the, the fit of this too, it's really nice. It's relaxed, it's not, a, I wouldn't say oversized, but a classic fit, honestly. Another brand that we really like has always been consistent with their button-ups is Alex Mill. I mean, they have several, great striped button-ups at a really good price point, really great quality, and maybe a little bit more of a tailored fit, but like by no means is it, you know, skinny at all. It's become like a bit of a trademark just because it's it's so easy going in nature and mm -hmm. really feels like a button-up that you can pretty much wear anytime. More so than a solid shirt, I think. Black blazers. What I like about the black blazer is that it feels edgy, but it also feels powerful. For the last few years, haven't felt very powerful often. It seems like there's a lot of things out of our control, not to get too meta, uh, but if the one thing you can control is the clothes that you put on your body, why not make the conscious decision to wear things that make you feel like the most powerful version of yourself? I just like how they look. I, I can't like. Yeah, it's fair. <laughs> you probably already have a black suit for those occasions that really require a black suit and like a black tie. Why not just take the jacket portion and wear it in your everyday life? <laughs> yeah, that's why we're here. The black blazer can, contrary to what you might think, be worn with a lot of different pants. So I like black blazers in like almost any form I can get them, but I particularly like this black blazer from Lou Dan, which is the aptly named 70s blazer. It's got these super beefy lapels, which are actually notch, which is kind of interesting. Usually you only see a lapel this size if it's a peak, but it's also got pretty substantial ticket pockets really big buttons right here, and it just fits in the way that you want it to. It's slouchy and less structured than you would imagine it would be, but it hugs your body in the ways that you want it to. It projects that type of power we were talking about. Totally, it's not like a, like a frumpy suit, but it's also not a super slim, like I just got this from the tailored suit. It's yeah. like, uh, kind of in between. It feels casual enough that it's not intimidating to wear in a, less formal setting. We also like different versions of the black blazer. It doesn't have to be this, you know, very kind of specific 70s style. Another one we like is from Celine. It's a double breasted 
black blazer. We've been really feeling double-breasted suits and blazers here at the office, I've seen a lot, but haven't quite seen too many black versions, but I think that is gonna change this year. ASAP Rocky's already worn it. Oh, yeah, sure you're right, any. you're right. I forgot about that. <laughs> he looks great in it, too. Crew neck sweater vest. You and I both wear a sweater vest, but who is the person that should try a crew neck sweater vest? We're already on board with the V-neck sweater vest resurgence, but I think the crew neck itself feels a little bit less expected. For whatever reason, sweater vests are more common in V-neck form. Maybe it's to show off a tie or a button down. This feels more casual. It's a little bit loosey-goosey. So we like crew neck sweater vests in almost any form you can name, but I'm really feeling this one from our main girl, Molly G, because she is like the foremost sweater vest virtuoso of her generation. She's a British designer. She happens to specialize in these types of erstwhile granddaddy fabrics and then rinses it all through a punk lens. So this, for example, is like a classic take on an argyle, except there's no diamonds, it's just straight squares. She also does a lot of really cool, freaky fair aisles. Well, the sweater vest is a really great layering piece. I mean, <laughs> you could wear it with, with no shirt underneath and that would be a vibe. But uh, if you don't want to do that, they look great with just like a plain white tee underneath. But in a more classic sense, just with like a button up underneath is, is really great too. We also really like another version from Susi. Um, a little bit easier of a price point, but just as stylish. I would definitely start there, maybe cop a few. Leather pants. So you're probably aware that leather exists. You know that it's a material. You might even have like a really sick moto jacket or a cafe racer made out of leather. But the leather goods that I'm really feeling this year and that I think you will too are actually leather pants. I think around, you know, the 2015s, 2016s, there was a lot of like rock star skinny leather pants. That's not really the type of leather pants that we're talking about now. So I'm actually wearing a pair here, but they should essentially fit like a crisp pair of straight jeans. The pair that we're looking at right here from Ernest W. Baker are really sick. You can't tell all that well, but they've got like a slight flare at the bottom, which is really in line with some of the other pants that we're feeling right now. But the essential silhouette is pretty familiar. It's got that very similar denim-like silhouette with two pockets here, just a simple fly zipper there. I mean, leather as a material is more expensive than a you know, denim. Those pants are super nice, but they'll cost you around 600-ish bucks. It's kind of an investment. And at that point, you, you do want something that's made with nice leather, but that's not the only option. You can find plenty of faux leather options, synthetic leather options out there that look just as great. There's a pair we really like from Sefer. They feel remarkably similar to the real thing. They'll run you about 200 bucks, which is, you know, not nothing, but it's definitely an easier price point to get into. Freaky clogs. The last trend we're talking about is a pair of clogs. And but not just any clogs. Yeah, not just any clogs. You might be thinking of like a Birkenstock, but what we're talking about is honestly more of a classic, like very chunky, like Swedish clog. And I'm not saying it's, it's not like completely made out of wood, although there are those. We're talking about some clogs with some serious heel action, something with like two inches worth of like, of a platform. I think this is just building on a, a wave that honestly, Birkenstock has already like ushered in with their Boston, which is a great alternative. One of the bigger names in this world is a brand called Tro and Torp. They're known for these wood sole clogs, which I'm wearing today. As you can see, they've got a pretty substantial heel and they've got these nails, like nailing down the upper. Clogs, they're not really a new thing, just like a lot of the pieces we're, we're talking about. They've been bubbling up. They've been bubbling up though, yeah, for sure. And I think uh, people are reframing how they see this like very traditional shoe that is maybe a little bit ugly <laughs> to some people, but definitely eye-catching. So it's not a new thing, but I think how people are wearing it now uh, makes it really fresh and contemporary. They're like an everyday shoe. You can wear them with any outfit, really. Uh, it might be 
I know for you, hard to wrap your head around. <laughs> I'm but, only trying to get on your level, Jared. But it's like what you said about leather pants. It's like, just think of them as another pant. With these, I just think of them as another pair of shoes. At the end of the day, I just kind of wear them with everything, with dress pants, jeans, cargo pants, cords, like, you name it. So I guess what makes these slightly more approachable to me is that like, if you look at the actual material they're made out of, it's just like a supple gray suede. It's not too freaky. Yeah, totally. I mean, suede shoes, gray color, it's not too intimidating. But there's a pony hair version that we really like. So if you want to add not just texture and not just height, but a crazy animal print to it, you can go that way. I've seen some also in like Sherling, in like, I don't know, in a variety of different- Doesn't Gucci things. make a pair that's like decked out in its interlocking G pattern? Oh yeah. With the horse bits? With the horse bits, with more studs, it can get really crazy. So if you really want to step up your shoe game, like <laughs> literally uh, in 2023, a pair of Wild Freaky Clogs is definitely gonna do that for you. Well, that's a wrap. Thank you guys as always for watching. And if you like anything we talked about, all the links are in the description right below.